everyone, and welcome back to Passion Sundays, the best way to end a week and start another. It's been said that to be successful in life, you have to have coaches and mentors. Our guest today stands to be one of the most coached and mentored people on this planet, and that's why he's very successful. Jarek Robbins, how are you? Very well. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Very excited uh, for this interview because the fact that, that you've been living all your life being coached and mentored and then you, you carved a niche for yourself yeah. to help people live it, as you say, yeah. you must have had a lot of passion for what you're doing. Sure. So tell us more about how important is passion for you. Um, passion is really important. I, I, the term I use for passion in my life is, is emotional rocket fuel. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the fuel or the passion that allows someone to stay consistent, to keep fueled up and filled up. And the analogy I always use is, is if you imagine like a, a soda can or a can of pop, if you, if you take that can, you open it up, it lets some of the pressure out, and then if you pour out most of it and you hand the can to a small child, they can dent it, if not crush it with their bare hands. Now, if you take the same can, you fill it all the way up with the passion or emotional rocket fuel, and then you do something to pressurize it against the world's pressure, now that small child has no chance at crushing it and could hardly even dent it with its bare hands because it's filled up, it's fueled up, it's pressurized with that passion, and, and it's in a position now to where it can withstand the natural pressures life puts on it. So I, I think it, it's the bulletproof strategy to create almost a force field around yourself to get through the challenges life is going to get through, you know, throw your way, to get through the ups, the downs, the lefts, the rights, to get through the days we wake up and you don't feel like it. If you're full and you're fueled and you're alive, like that's what causes you to feel like it. That's what puts you in your strongest, most passionate state and drives you forward each day. So I, I think it's really the fuel behind everything someone does if used properly. Amazing. So I, I love the analogy you've used of, of the soda and the rocket fuel. We all run low along the way during the journey. And then, and then you know, sometimes your rocket fuel and your soda is splashing all over the place and the energy is, is distracted. Sure. How do you find a way to keep that focused? Uh, you got to refill consistently. Okay. So here's the challenge. If we were in a Formula One race, let's say Monaco Grand Prix, mm -hmm. we get in our car, we fill up once, right? So this is, the, this is saying, what if you filled up once a week? Well, the race isn't even a week long, yeah, and how many work. times did they fill up? Yeah. So if you filled up one tank of fuel, and you try to go race the Monaco Grand Prix, how mm. many laps do you get before you're sitting on the side watching everyone pass you by in life because you're empty, and you got yeah. nothing left to give? That's what most people do. You know, most people don't even have a routine to fill up or fuel up in their day, much less a consistent routine. So you got to think about it. These Formula you know, One racing teams, they have something called a pit stop. It's a consistent routine that they're geared that in like 10 seconds or less, they can refuel the car, change the tires, scrape the bugs off the windshield, get it ready, and get it back out on the racetrack faster than you can blink your eyes. What's your routine? Mm. You know, what routine do people need, and how often do you need it? That's the other thing. As a team, they sit down every day, and they practice and practice and practice to figure out, hey, I can go 12 laps before I need a pit. I can go eight laps mm -hmm. before I need a pit. So they're constantly measuring and fine-tuning how far can they go, how fast can they do it, and how quickly can they do it to be at the highest effectivity point of their life. I don't know if that's a word, but I made it up. Yeah, yeah, uh, you've, actually, you've actually talked about that. That was about, about my question is how often. Now you're saying it's relevant to the person, but there must be a bare minimum that you say if you're below that, you're not working. Once a day. Once a day. You I have to have a daily ritual. It. If you don't have a daily ritual to fill up and fuel up, mm -hmm. you're praying, hoping, and, and you know, hoping at that point, which hope is not a strategy to success. Yeah. You don't hope it turns out well, you make it turn out well. And, and, and here's the key, if you don't even have a daily strategy, if you wake up empty that day, you're done. That's like if you, if you pull your car to the racetrack, you spend a million dollars on this car, uh, it's empty, and you're, you pay a guy to get in there and slam on the gas pedal, nothing happens, it doesn't even turn on. All right. So, so that's the thing, you Agreed. need a daily routine at least. I would say have a morning routine, and you want an evening routine. Even if it's short. Even if it's short. Ten Five minutes, minutes ten Five minutes, minutes, that's fine. matter. Something to fuel you up. Okay. And everyone's fueled up by different things. Yeah, true. For some people, it's looking at a picture of their kids and family, and that immediately fuels them up and sparks them. For other people, it's mentally rehearsing their day, meditating to clear out all the junk from the day before. And that's something I use. It is in the morning, if you wake up and you still got old, grimy fuel from three days ago, you might need to meditate a little and like scrub the inside mm. of your mind and emotions to get that stuff out so you can have some new fuel built up within. So if you've been saying the same goals and the same vision and the same thing again and again and again, you might need something fresh and new, like some new fuel, new high quality rocket fuel to move you, inspire you, and drive you forward. 
So it's that thing. Everyone's different, but you got to work with an individual. That's why, you know, I personally believe in one-on-one coaching and mentoring mm. because every person's different. I can put you in a group and tell you all to do something. At the same time, if I work with you, I can figure out what fuels you. I can figure mm. out what slows you down. I can figure out what makes you tick. I can figure mm. out how effective you are. And just like one formula race car, I can sit there and fine-tune the pressure, the brakes, the shocks, the turn, the this, the, the captain, everything. And, and the more I can fine-tune that, the more effective we can get you to be. Awesome. You, you've led me nicely to an interesting question. You mentioned that different people are fueled by different things. And a lot of time we do the pit stops, but we end up with the wrong results because we're not refueling with the right rocket fuel that means to us. Sure. And you, you have an interesting personal experience. Again, the, the advantage of you being surrounded with all the mentors and coaches throughout your life has so, an advantage. Here's the thing. I'll stop right there. Everyone's surrounded by them. Not everyone pays attention to the fact that they're there. Okay. Good. And here's my belief. I'll throw this out there. Mm-hmm. This is the thought to interject. Every human being you cross paths with is a mentor, a coach. 100%. 100%. Agreed. A homeless person, a agreed, better, agreed. A I learned my best lessons from random people, from anybody I meet, a taxi driver, a receptionist, a security guy, and, exactly. and, and I'm open to learning. My question was on the uh, downside of being surrounded by so many strong personalities around you. Uh, we're in a region where a lot of people find themselves their second generation, third generation business people, entrepreneurs, sure. and sometimes they're pressured to refuel at pit stops that might not be meaningful to them. Sure. How would somebody be able to distinct that this is truly my passion or am I just being pushed and found myself here? Sure. How do you do so, that? So here's what's tricky. I grew up and we have multiple family businesses existing on different sides of the family. So mm-hmm. I grew up at a very, very young age with a suit and tie learning sales present, you know, presenting with my grandma and insurance. And I was like, okay, I could do that. And then I grew up working in sales you know, at a little event with my mom selling you know, handicrafts and mm-hmm. random stuff. Uh, I also grew up around my dad who happens to be great at sales and training and coaching and speaking and all those other things. And, and so there's lots of different options that were available. And for a while, I chose to work with Dad. Mm -hmm. And so I did a lot of my training within his company. And he's got, I don't know, 18, 19 companies now. And they do like $6 billion a year in revenue altogether. They have thousands of employees. And and so at any point, I'm sure I could go try to find a way to work with one of them and have Mm -hmm. a safe job. But here's the God honest truth. One of the greatest gifts he ever gave me was his whole thing was like, Go work somewhere else. Go do something else. Go try something else so that you can figure out who you really are. You can figure out if you have the, you know, what it takes to succeed. Mm. You can figure out what you actually like doing. Mm. You can figure out what you're talented at, what you're not so great at, where you need to grow, where you need to learn. And you can have a fair shot at no one knowing who you are and, and seeing how well you can actually perform. Because whether you want to say it or not, if you're within a family business, people treat you differently. They look at you differently. They have different expectations of you, good, bad, or indifferent. They do. Agreed. And and, and so that ability was a great gift he gave me, which was go find yourself. Get out. Now, I I did seven years ago. I broke off, started my own company. It happened to be in the same industry as one of his Mm -hmm. companies. And, And I've been able to find myself. Nice. And in the beginning, it was a little very, very similar to his because that's all I knew. Yeah. And it's the equivalent of learning how to play the piano. Like, you don't start off by playing your own symphony. You start off by playing Beethoven and Mozart and Bach and all these other guys. And eventually, after so long, then you start to learn your music. So I always mm. tell people, the first thing is you got to, there's three steps in figuring out you know, that passion or that purpose. Number one, you got to figure out what works. And a lot of time that comes from modeling other people. Mm-hmm. So you see what someone else did and you try it. You see what they didn't do, you don't mm-hmm. do that. And you just learn from following what other people have done. After you figure out what works and you start to get reasonable or sizable results, at that point you got to transition to what works for you. Mm-hmm. And this is where you start fine-tuning and adjusting, where you say, listen, I know this works for them, but that doesn't work for me. It's not my style. Mm-hmm. It's not my personality. If you notice, I wear jeans and a shirt everywhere. That works for me. I'm not a suit and tie person. I've learned that over time. Now, there was a stage in my life where I'd always have suit and tie on because that was appropriate. And, and after so long, like, that doesn't work for me. You know, I have to do what works for me. And if, it, if it's allowed here, great. I'm, I'm welcome. If it's not allowed here, I probably won't be invited back. And that's mm-hmm. okay. It's not my place. And, and I've learned that. So that authentic voice, that authentic piece of who you are and how you show up has to come through at some point. And once you figure out what works for you, the final step is how do you automate it? 
How do you make it seamless, effortless, and just part of your, your habits and routines that continue to go again and again and again on autopilot every day in a great way? Hmm. So something we talked about in the presentation I did earlier today was 40% of what we do every day is not a conscious choice or decision. It's just an automatic habit we've built into our nervous system that's continuing to cycle and repeat itself again and again. So how do you build the good, healthy, powerful, strong habits to allow them to continue to repeat and cycle in a great way? Awesome. Final step. I, I love that. I think this is the best way we could have concluded three practical steps. And I love the fact that you said it's okay to model at the beginning of until course. you find, you, you carve your niche out. I don't know anyone who's picked up the piano and played a symphony from day one love without it. having any help or assistance or trying to play someone else's music first. Awesome. I love it. Let's play someone else's music until we can play our own tunes. This exactly. is an amazing way. But don't be a cover band your whole life. <laughs> love it. This is, the, this is the best, most practical, I think, idea about living passion. So thank you very much. This has been an amazing interview and live it up. You're <laughs> Thank too. you very much. Passion! What do you think? I would really love to hear your opinion. If you'd like to stay engaged, subscribe to our social media channels and if you want even more valuable interviews and tips and tricks on how to live passionately, then go to mustafahamwi.com and subscribe to our Passion Sundays newsletter. Until the next episode, live passionately.